Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast project. So let's get cracking. Good day, everybody. This is a tutorial I made earlier if you have not seen it yet. There is a link in the properties. It is a bit.ly. Simply copy and paste that, and then the tutorial takes about 15 minutes, and you'll have an epic CodeBlocks 3D printable ring. Now today I'm going to give you an upgrade and I also wanted to share I have created a ring sizer. If you copy this and paste it up here, you will instantly go to a Google Sheet that I'm allowing you to copy. When you hit make a copy, you will be able to see all the ring sizes that I shared and you'll be able to compute the numbers you want to use to get your ring size. I'll explain this more in a bit, but I just wanted you to see that it is available. So real quickly, I'm going to enter my project. You'll have to complete that tutorial to get it built. Once you have built, it looks like this. You put in the letters and when you hit play, it instantly makes a 3D printable ring with the letters you wanted on it. So mine right now says Go Lions. I am printing that over on the 3D printer. I'll show it to you in a bit. Real quickly though, I need to show you a problem. If I add a J, a little J, or a capital J, or a Q, and I'm going to do a capital Q, let's quickly hit play and zoom in and check it out. See, those are just too tall. It's because they are a tiny bit taller. Of course, friends, I've got a fix. Let me show you. Back up here at our template, we are going to duplicate all the stuff inside, and I'm going to just set it off to the edge so I can build. I'm going to move this template and I'm going to collapse it. So now I've got more room to play. And I'm going to make a new template. And this one's going to be called size because we're going to use a size command. Of course, we need to bring up our template chunk. Throw this away for now because I don't want to use it yet. I'm only going to use it in special cases. And I'm going to put it all inside here. Now, instead of the scale command, which works so good with our numbers here, we're going to throw this piece out right click delete that block and we're going to bring in a different modify called set size when we drop this in it asks what we want i have tried a little bit of these so i'm going to do four four and let's see if seven is the right number for z it is from the center of course it's going to turn and adjust and then we only need to use this in certain spots so if we slide down to our code, I need to use it for these three letters. So I'm simply going to right click and delete this block. Go to my templates and then we're going to use the size block there. So we've got a letters scaling and we've got a size scaling. Once again, right click delete. Drop in that size. And right click delete. And drop in that size. So we've got two different ways. Now when we hit play, let's see what we get. There are the J and the Q. <laughs> Notice they stuck in way too far, which was a problem. That height though is a lot better. Let me show you how to fix that depth. So back here when we made this, I said four for Y. Let's instead change that to two because that'll be the thickness. And then I'm also going to make this 6.8, see if that looks a little bit better. I'm going to hit reset and play. And that, my friends, is pretty darn awesome. Just like that, we have solved our problem by having two different templates. I'm going to expand this again so we can see them both. That fits on the screen reasonably well. So friends, here we are with our letters and our size. You may ask, why not just always use the size command? Well, there is a reason. Check this out. With our original system, I can leave a blank. Check this out. If I take our size system and change this to a blank, now when we hit play, check it out. We get an error. It cannot handle a size that is empty. So to fix that, we would have to go back here to this one, delete it, and where we wanted the blank, we just have to drop in the original letters sizing. Let's also rename this real quick. If we move up here and we do rename template, we should really say use scale for this one because that's what we did is use the scale command right here. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to rename 
and this will be use size. So it just makes it easier to understand which technique we're using as we make our ring. So friends, there are all the fixes. Now let me show you how we use that ring sizer. So if we go to the ring size file that I shared with you, it shows all the ring sizes that people use. I am generally a 10 or a 10 and a half. So this number 20.2 is what matters to me. So if we bounce back to our project quick, I was using 2.2 and 13 in mine. Check this out. If I put in 2.2 and 13, I get a result of 21.6, which is a size 12, a little bigger than that. Now printers can all print different, so you do need to be wary of that. But I'm gonna change this to a 12 real quick. There's a 19.6. Bingo, that gets me close. I'm gonna do a 12.4. And see if I like that. That gets me a 20.4. I'm going to change that to 12.2. And 12.2 gives me a 20. So that's what I'm going to try. We simply return back to our project. Type in that 12.2. I'm going to quickly get rid of these extra chunks down here. So I'm going to backspace and backspace because I don't want that on my cool lion's ring. And also I do need to delete these because now that they're blank, those won't work. And then I need to put those use scale commands down below both of them. Let's hit play and see how it turns out. There's my go lions. Wait a second for it to group. And bingo, let's export it for 3D printing. I had already saved it once. I'm going to call this one V2. This, my friends, is Kira, and I'm going to print this on the Soval SV06. Of course, we need to find the file. There is the GoLions V2. If we check my settings quickly, I'm doing low quality, wall thickness of 0.8, 1.12 for the top bottom thickness, infill density of 15 using lines. I am printing with PLA at 200. I'm using a bed plate of 60, print speed of 60, and I am not going to generate support and I'm gonna try it without adhesion. Now I have done these before and adhesion is pretty smart. If you are, I recommend raft. And then also double check all your raft settings. So I'm gonna type raft out here in the search. And the one we really wanna add is raft as extra margin. If you look over here, mine was set at three, which is pretty groovy because there's not a ton. Sometimes when you first load this, it's set at like 15, which is a lot of raft that you don't necessarily need. I would do three or maybe even 1.5 for a ring like this. So I'm gonna close this window and then I don't even want raft. So I'm gonna go back to none, but that's how you would get there if you need it while working with your 3D printer. And here we are over at the Soval SV06. It took 16 minutes. And here is my ring, once again, printed without supports. Now I accidentally had that tree thing on when I first sliced it, so that... And friends, check it out. There is our awesome Go Lions ring created with Tinkercad code blocks. And friends, this is what it looks like on. This one's a little loose because I used that 13. I'll be printing the other one in a minute. Also, just another cool project. That is my Lion's Keychain. If you're interested in that, I'll make sure there's a link in the properties. Friends, I want to take a moment to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you will find my day one favorites, useful starters, and then also Tinkercad essentials. Friends, I do also want to mention the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach out to me almost instantly. I also want to take a moment to highlight the Tinkercad Community Discord. Friends, as you can see, we've got a boatload of members and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.